Hey, what's up you guys? And let me be the first to say well, welcome back to the BT Motorized YouTube channel. So today we are making a very heavily anticipated video. This has been a long time in the making. So we have Tyler's custom frame and we also have a insane snow kit. So we're gonna get right to the video. We'll go down to all the juicy details on it and let's get started. We're not just going to be talking about the snow kit we're actually doing a few more things on this bike as well so i have them all laid out on this mat right here first thing we're going to do is a pull start conversion kit instead of the chain start just because this track will slip like crazy if you tried to start it with the chain next thing we're going to be doing is the carburetor and that's just because these little you can see this part right here where my fingernails on actually cracked on the old one so we're doing a new carb and then chain tensioner, obviously, just to make sure the chain stays tight. That, and then we're also doing a clutch cable because go figure that snaps as well. Before we get too deep into this build, I actually want to go over one quick thing with you guys. And it's actually one of the most important things we're doing, which is a pull cord conversion instead of a chain drive start. So with these, they're great. They're really cheap. It's not going to break the bank. The biggest things with these that is it just sucks is this pull cord it snaps really easy i mean you can see how thin that is when you're dealing with the motor that has a lot of compression like these ones it's gonna snap super easy uh, but that's not the only thing that these struggle with another thing is these paws right here so it's kind of like a ratchet and tools that you'd have at home so once the motor starts so it engages the motor when you pull the cord and then the motor will spin and you can hear it oh wrong way so you can hear how it ratchets and i mean when you have the motor pegged going like six thousand rpms it spins super fast and you could just imagine how quickly it would wear out so that's the biggest thing with these i mean they're great they do the job but they do wear out really quick first thing we're gonna do is put the pull cord mechanism on so with this it actually slides on super easy so you just line up these little dowels with the magneto right there you can slide on like that and it'll have Tyler do it. There we go. Perfect. And you can see it nice and solid right there. So we'll put the washer on and then we'll put a nut on and then we can actually just put this cover on. So it's a super, super easy process. Now just make sure this is nice and snug because this is a moving part. Perfect. Once that is nice and tight, you will get your cover and pull cord. You'll just slide it over like that, and then you'll just cinch it down. Sweet, just like that, it's all set. Next thing we're gonna do on the bike is a clutch cable. Also, something important that you wanna do when you start these is you wanna pull the clutch in. Otherwise, just with all the tension from the wheel, you will definitely snap the pull cord. And you guys have seen us put clutch cables in a million times, so I'm not gonna go into detail. Basically, you'll just want to run it through the housing. It'll come out this end right here You'll just run it through this lever and then there's a little screw to cinch it down Now that we got the clutch cable on we are going to move on to the carburetor Just like the clutch cable. This is a super easy process You literally just slide it onto the motor and then tighten that little screw down most of the time really easy Yeah, unless you uh, either have a stripped bolt or you break your carb, but these are from China So you have to you have to you have to be a little delicate and you know kid will... in China made these Anything that can happen will happen with these. And while we're at it, we're gonna put the fuel line on along with the fuel filter. Cool, we got gas. The carbs mounted, you're gonna wanna put your slide and spring in. That's actually what controls the airflow that goes into your motor. Tighten that top piece on, and you will be all set. Fuel and air taken care of, we are going to move on to the last thing, which is the chain tensioner. So now I'll just put the spring on, keep tension on the chain, keep it from flying off. Definitely an important thing. Perfect. All right, you ready to give this thing a, a pull? Yeah. Now 
That is so loud. Oh my gosh. That sounds insane. I've never heard this bike run before, by the way. <laughs> okay, now. The track spins. Oh my gosh. Oh crap. Tyler almost died. Nah, he good. He knows what he's doing. Oh, we ran out of gas, hold on. <laughs> nice. Uh. Okay, I need to go help Tyler. Okay, give it. You. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, this pull cord just broke. So, uh, as you saw, this stupid pull cord broke. So, we're just giving ourselves more stuff to do. The knot just came through the actual handle, so nothing too crazy. Well, I have a stronger one that's like not super soft that should work. Okay, now we're just going to feed it through. I'll probably just actually cut this and retie it. Yeah, that would probably be a better idea. Tie a bigger knot. We just cut the end off, that way it's a lot easier to slide on. No. Oh, no. It's okay, I see it. Oh. Don't worry. Oh! Tyler to save the day, geez. Maybe. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Cool beans. I mean, you can see how bad of a design it is. I mean, look at, you're already starting to see shininess, which is a good indicator of lots of friction. The knot came undone. <laughs> I just tie two knots on tie, it. Yeah. I can't believe it. Just. I told you these things. Like that. They work well for. For about. For starting it. For uh, thirty seconds, they work. They work well if you have a build like this, yes. But then they break, and I haven't found any other design. I was hoping that some company would have one that's like better than all the that's others. That's probably good. Yeah. Well, we'll throw that on and give it another shot. Okay. All those that wanted to see Sherman, here he is. Sherman, come here. Come here. Nah, he literally shook his head and said no. But yeah, he's doing good. He's just living his best life. He's our shop pup. He wants to play right now. Only one. Aggressive. We're gonna give this another shot. Let's hope it works. I mean, it didn't even last, what's the count, like 10 pulls? Not even. That sucks. So, oh, hi, dude. So, I want to explain to you guys what happened. All right, it's good. So, no, one of the pulls inside, you know what I was talking about? One of the springs broke. So, it's not releasing from the motor. Therefore, if we start it, it might rip the pull cord out. Huh, we'll give it a shot. Now that we're done with all the repair side of things, let's get to the technical stuff on this conversion kit. So this is a K-Track ski track conversion kit, and it's actually meant for a mountain bike. Obviously we've converted it to a motorized bike, but let's go over some of the cooler stuff with this. So the first thing we'll kind of go over is the mounting on this, which is actually really smart. So obviously you have the mounting on the dropouts right here. Then you also have it on the lowers. That way you keep it from kind of tilting like that and that. And then this front ski also has suspension as well. So it's kind of hard to show on camera-ish. So obviously you have the suspension from the fork. 
and then if you lift the bike up, the ski goes down and then it returns. So I mean, it's it's kind of suspension in a way, like nothing too crazy, but the back is where stuff gets really cool. Now we're at the cool stuff. So the back has one, two, three, four different suspension pivots. So this is this is where stuff gets really cool. First one being the track right here. This one doesn't matter too much. This one's more to keep tension on the track itself. Um, if you do go over a big bump though, this right here will absorb it. So it'll take a little bit of the sting out of your aggressive rides. And then another big thing to take that bite out is you actually have suspension built into the back right here, you can see. So it doesn't return the greatest, but with weight on it, it'll return a lot better. But yeah, I'm super excited for uh, winter to come. We can give this a try. We'll definitely have to make a part two. Also, while we're on the part series of videos, last video, I know I said I'd make a part two. Um, we tried getting the Phantom motor on, but it turns out it has a bent crankshaft. So we really don't have any other motors to throw on it. If we do, I will make a part two. I just, I didn't want to waste your guys' time like I did last time. I wouldn't say it was a waste. I mean, we still learned some stuff on it. We learned how to diagnose problems. But yeah, um, just, just don't look for a part two for that video. More than likely, we're not gonna have any. As soon as it snows, we'll make sure to get a part two as soon as possible for you guys. Uh, surprisingly though, the weather hasn't been cooperate or cooperating very well for that. We've had weather in like the 30s and 40s and now it's like 68 degrees outside today. So welcome to Utah, I guess. But we'll cross our fingers that it snows soon and then we can test it out. But there you guys have it. We had a successful video. We got the bike running. It runs great too. Um, I mean, the motor, there's something going on with it, with it not wanting to start easily. But once it starts, it's fine. So that will address a little bit later. Other than that, it's perfect. I wouldn't change anything about this bike. I mean, you have the brushed aluminum frame, which is custom. I mean, you have the integrated gas tank. It's just, it's a really, really clean build. And I hope you guys like it. But yeah, be sure to stay tuned for that part two. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share with a friend if they share the same interests. And well, I don't want to take any more of your guys' time. So you have a great rest of your night. We'll see ya.